Welcome to a Legendarium special about Tsar Peter III, the doomed husband of Catherine the Great. In this episode, we will talk about how a German-born youth became emperor of a country that he absolutely hated. Peter III was born Karl Peter Ulrich in 1728, the son of Charles Frederick, Duke of Holstein Gottorp, and the Grand Duchess Anna of Russia, daughter of Peter the Great. After giving birth, Anna developed an infection and died a week later. Peter's father Charles proved a hard, ambitious man who wanted only one thing, power. He pushed for his wife to become the Russian Empress, and after her death he wasted no time with mourning and turned his beady gaze to his son instead. As a child, Peter became stricken with smallpox which left him with scars for the rest of his life. By the age of ten, Peter already developed an over-fondness for drinking which would not help with his judgment. Nonetheless, his father's wishes came true when Peter's aunt, Empress Elizabeth of Russia, adopted Peter at the age of 14. He adopted the Russian name Pyotr Fyodorovich and went to Russia. Auntie Elizabeth also forced Peter to give up Lutheranism in favor of the Russian Orthodox faith. Peter never made any secret about how much he hated Russia and the Orthodox Church. His tutors also noted his laziness, arrogance, and disturbing habit of torturing small animals. Nonetheless, young Peter married in 1745 on his Aunt Elizabeth's orders for the Empress wanted Peter to have an heir. She chose Catherine, then a minor German princess named Sophie, and the couple wed when Peter was 17 and Catherine was 16. Attractive, intelligent, and curious, young Catherine could not have been more different from Peter. Uninterested in his wife, Peter often brought his toy soldiers to their bed and forced her to march them through their drills. She once claimed that she found her husband standing next to a dead rat hanging from a noose. Peter declared that the rat committed treason and he forced her to stand by it for hours while holding a musket. A German, and enthralled by all things military, Peter revered Frederick of Prussia, despite Russia being at war with him during Elizabeth's reign. He even stopped to salute a painting of King Frederick whenever he passed it. Peter also insisted on keeping his own private guard from his native duchy of Holstein rather than choosing men from the Russian court. Behind his back, Catherine called Peter an idiot and good for nothing, and unsurprisingly, by 1750, she took a lover named Sergei Saltikov. Sadly, Catherine's first two pregnancies ended in miscarriage, but in 1754, Catherine gave birth to a son named Paul. Peter could not have failed to notice that his wife became pregnant, though they never had relations, yet he tolerated the affair in the interest of producing the next generation of Romanov heirs. He himself took a series of mistresses, chief among them Elizaveta Voronstova, who swore like a soldier, squinted her eyes, smelled like a dung heap, and spit while talking. In any case, Empress Elizabeth removed Paul from Peter's care and took charge of the boy's education, since she did not trust her nephew to do the job. Catherine also had a daughter by the Polish diplomat Stanislaus Ponatowski, but sadly the girl died in infancy. Peter seemed much more concerned with the fate of his hero, King Frederick the Great, than being steadily defeated by Russia and her allies. Regardless, Peter succeeded to the throne on the death of Empress Elizabeth in December 1761. Always a bore, Peter III grumbled during the funeral about how long it took and left early, perhaps to play with his toy soldiers or hang another rat for treason. Hoping to make friends among the ruling class, the 32-year-old Emperor Peter III freed the nobility from military service. He also abolished the widely loathed secret chancellery and cut needless offices within the imperial government to save on spending. 
in a progressive move, he also revoked a lord's right to murder a serf without trial. Very generous of him. And to his credit, one of Peter's sycophants wanted to build a gold statue in his honor, but Peter replied that gold could be put to better use. However, his reforms came to nothing because of his love for all things German, especially the Kingdom of Prussia and its King Frederick the Great. Peter's rise saved Frederick, who had been thinking of suicide, as defeat closed in on him. In April 1762, Peter III signed a treaty which returned all Prussian territory occupied by Russian soldiers, throwing away the sacrifices of thousands of Russian service members. By June 1762, Peter III even made an alliance with Russia's former enemy, Prussia. Peter III even threw out the Russian army's old uniforms and replaced them with Prussian blue. Unsurprisingly, this horrified the Russian ruling class and officer corps. Yet the straw which broke the camel's back came when Peter III announced that Russia would join Prussia in a war that would expand his home duchy of Holstein Gottorp, a war so far removed from Russian interests that the ruling class could not help but be horrified. On June 28th, while Peter III attended exercises outside St. Petersburg, Empress Catherine staged a coup. Peter ignored messages urging him to return to the capital because he could not believe that everyone would turn on him so abruptly. By the time he finally did return, his wife Catherine already held the throne and all the cards. She allowed her deposed husband to take his violin, an African slave named Narcissus, and his favorite dog Mopsy to the dacha at Ropsha. At that time, perhaps she did not intend to have her husband murdered. Nonetheless, some of Catherine's supporters feared that their enemies would try to put Peter III back on the throne. We do not know if Catherine knew, but on July 6, the brother of her latest lover, Alexei Orloff, smothered the former Tsar in his bed. He ruled for only 183 days. Catherine laid him to rest in a monastery rather than the official Romanov mausoleum. In the official statement, Catherine's government claimed that the former Tsar died of hemorrhoids. And later, when Empress Catherine invited French mathematician Jean Laurent to tutor her son, he declined, commenting, I am too prone to hemorrhoids, and they are too serious in that country. When his possible son Paul took the throne after Catherine's death, he exhumed his probable father's body from the monastery and laid it next to his wife Catherine in an act of spite to his mother. And during World War II, people claimed that Peter's ghost saved children from the bombing of a schoolhouse at the old site of his palace in Oranenbaum. That wraps things up for this episode of The Legendarium. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, press like. If you want to see more, press subscribe. And if you've got anything to say, let me know in the comments section. Thanks again for joining me, and I hope that you have a great rest of the day.